Hi everyone, Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com. And today we are going to be talking about how to record loans that you have received in your QuickBooks records, and then how to record the payments on those loans. It's a little bit of a specialty item that I see people often get wrong. So let me show you exactly how to do that. It is super simple, I promise. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're here in QuickBooks Online and in our sample company, I'm on banking and then I've selected my business checking account. And earlier this year in our sample company, we received a $10,000 loan and we need to record that correctly in our bookkeeping records. Before we get started, let's actually create the accounts that we're going to need to categorize these transactions to. So I'm gonna to go to uh, transactions, chart of accounts, and then I'm gonna select new. I'm just gonna call this loan payable. The account type, for my purposes, I'm going to select other current liability, but long-term liability is another perfectly fine choice. And for detail type, it doesn't really matter too much, but we'll just call it the loan payable detail type. Now, with the way that we're adding it, we are seeing the loan amount deposited into our checking account. So we don't wanna record an opening balance. So we're gonna ignore this part right here, and we're just gonna hit save. The other account that we need to add is our interest expense, because of course, all loans these days come with interest. For the account type, we're gonna go with expense. And for detail type, we'll go with interest paid. And then we'll save. Now that we have those in our bookkeeping, we'll go back to bank transactions. And checking where we received the deposit. Now, a lot of people, I've seen this happen before, you get a deposit in your checking account, and so the natural inclination is to record that as a revenue item. But that would be incorrect. The loan is, you know, exactly that. It's money on loan to us. It's actually money that we owe. So we record that as a liability, not as a revenue item. So we're gonna use that loan payable account that we just created to record the deposit. If you'd like to add a vendor, I would recommend that as well. Give it a vendor name. Okay, so then we're going to add that to our bookkeeping records. Now, the next thing we're, we are gonna have is the payments on the loan. I've got two loans going on here. You'll see Shopify Capital, we're gonna get to that in a moment. But these just plain loan payments are associated with the $10,000 loan that we just categorized in our bookkeeping records. So most loans, you'll have a schedule and the loan payment will in general stay exactly the same over the period of time, but the amount of the payment that goes towards paying off your loan, so the principal portion, and the amount that is interest expense to you is going to change. If you did not get an what's called an amortization schedule from your bank, which is the schedule that tells you how much of each payment is principal and interest, then I have added a calculator, an amortization schedule calculator to my website. You can just go to smallbusinesssarah.com, loan-payments, and you can find written instructions for this video and then the amortization schedule generator. So in our example, that loan amount you saw, the deposited amount was $10,000. And I believe I had chose 24 months as the example. And I am going with 3.5% interest rate. So of course, change these for your circumstances, the amount, the term, and the interest rate. And then we are going to calculate our amortization schedule. And it looks like this. So for the first payment, this column, the capital column, is the principal. And here is our interest. So let's see, 272, 73, and 350. So the first payment is right here in May. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to select that payment and we need to, we can't just categorize the entire amount to interest or to the loan. We need to break it into two parts. So we're going to use the split function. QuickBooks is realizing we're probably paying our loan and so we're going to have some interest and that amount was 350. And then we're going to use the second line and we're going to, this is the principal part that's going to reduce our loan payable. And you can see QuickBooks is already calculating what that amount will be and that was in agreement with our amortization schedule. So we are all good. It zeroes out and we can apply and accept. Now I'm going to go ahead and categorize a few more of those payments. Okay, that's probably enough for now so we can get an idea of what this looks like in our financial statements. First, let me show you what the register is going to look like. So if we go to bank register, and the register is just kind of like the log of activity, and we're going to find that loan payable account that we created in other current liabilities. This shows us the activity on the loan. So here is that $10,000 deposit that increased our liability. And then with each loan payment, a certain amount gets applied to principal, and the amount of principal keeps going up the more loan payments that we make, and the balance that we owe on the loan keeps going down. So as of 830, our balance is only $8,850 on the loan, down from $10,000. Let's take a look at the balance sheet. Let's go to Reports, Balance Sheet. Okay, so I set the balance sheet date to August 30th. Here's our loan payable, payable amount as of August 30th. Can't believe I misspelled that. Okay, and because my balance sheet report is really, I set it from March through August, I can see all of the activity on the balance sheet. So this is very similar, or it is exactly the same as the register. We've got our beginning balance when we added it the amount and then the balance. And then with, with each payment, we're reducing the amount owed. And then let's take a look at the profit and loss. Profit and loss. Okay, I don't have any other activity included in this profit and loss, but you can see in expenses, we have our interest amount paid. So we are all set. We can see the amount that the loan is costing us. It's costing us basically the interest expense and the interest is not reducing the loan. So as you can see, super easy to record the receipt of the cash when you get some financing, but there's a few steps you have to take in order to properly record the payments correctly. Now let's go back to our bank feed and take a look at a Shopify capital loan. Shopify capital loans are very popular. I see them all of the time. They work a little bit differently than regular loans in that Shopify takes back a certain amount from each sale to pay off the loan. So in our other example, we had the same loan payment each month on the same date of the month but with Shopify Capital, every time you make a sale, they take a portion of that to pay off your loan. So it's a little different. And because of that, there tend to be a lot more transactions, a lot more payments. And so it could be time consuming to enter the principal and interest portion for each one. And in addition, sometimes I'm not sure how easily accessible that information is within the back end of Shopify Capital. As a bookkeeper, I'm not always privy to all of the backend resources, so I have found this method to be easy to record Shopify Capital payments correctly over the life of the loan. So let me show you what I mean. Before we get started, let me create a new liability account for our Shopify Capital. So I'm going to go to, once again, the chart of accounts. Maybe this time I can spell it correctly.
Okay, so once again, when we receive the money, let's go ahead and categorize that deposit to our new loan account that we created. Rather than split each and every one of these transactions, because like I said, they're different, there are a lot of them, so for many reasons, that makes it difficult. Instead, what we're gonna do is select each one. So these were loan payments on that other loan that we already covered. Let me make sure I have everything. So we're gonna edit. If you had put in a vendor initially, which is a good idea, you could put that here as well. And we're gonna categorize these all directly to the loan. Shopify capital loans are often short-lived as well, which it makes this method work better for this type of loan. Let's go ahead and look at the bank register for this loan. Okay, we have our initial deposit of $1,000. We have many, many payments. You'll notice I didn't bother running the amortization schedule because we never know how much they're gonna take for the loan payments because it depends on our sales. And you'll see we get to the end of all of our payments. So these are all the payments on our loan. And instead of this coming to zero, it is negative. And it's negative because we haven't recorded any of the interest expense. If we were to run the balance sheet report, it would be showing on the Shopify capital line negative 60, 64. And we have right now no interest expense recorded on the profit and loss. So to rectify this, we're gonna just do a little journal entry. Looks like 618 was the last date, the last payment. So we'll go ahead and choose that. Oh, and I think I remember the amount. I'm pretty sure. We were negative 60, 64. I can correct it if not. So we hadn't recorded any um, interest expense yet. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it looks like I had two interest. I had already had an interest paid account that I used for the other loan. It doesn't matter. Interest expense and interest paid doesn't matter. Ideally, you would pick one and stick with it. Okay, so we're gonna record that. And then the credit line is going to be to our Shopify Capital loan in the same amount. You'll notice that QuickBooks added that amount for us because in accounting, you need your debits and your credits in total to agree. You can't post a journal entry without them agreeing. So we're gonna go ahead and save and close. And now we come to zero. So what that did is instead of this showing up as a negative amount, like we overpaid our loan, because we didn't overpay our loan, we just hadn't recorded the interest. So we've got our loan rightfully at zero at the end of the loan period. The loan period is completely done. It's going to zero. And then now we've re recorded the 6064 as interest expense. So if we go to reports, You can see we've got our 60, 64 on our profit and loss statement. As I said, in an ideal world, you would just pick one of these accounts and put all of your interest, no matter the loan, to the same interest expense account. But for our purposes, it did help to show you them separately so that you could see how it all worked together. Okay, and that's how I recommend doing Shopify Capital loans. If you have a Shopify Capital loan and it straddles over a year end, then what I recommend you do is simply find a balance somewhere in the Shopify backend for how much you still owe as of the end of the year. So as of December 31st, maybe you owe 50 bucks or something or 100 bucks, whatever that is. Same idea, create that journal entry so that your ending balance is 50 bucks or 100 bucks rather than zero. And it'll be the same entry where you're recording interest expense and crediting the Shopify loan payable. And then that way your financial statements will, for the year, will accurately reflect that Shopify loan balance and the interest expense for that year. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I appreciate your like and subscribe if this has been helpful. And 
If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks and have a great day.